Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. The spy film Goldfinger hit theaters in 1964, and it was the third installment in the James Bond series. It stars Sean Connery as the fictional agent James Bond, and the whole thing is based on the 1959 novel of the same name. The movie also stars Honor Blackman in her role as Miss Galore, Gert Frobe as the title character Goldfinger, along with Shirley Eaton as the ill-fated Jill Masterson. The movie's plot has Bond investigating gold smuggling by the gold magnet Goldfinger and eventually uncovering his plans to contaminate the United States Bullion Depository at Fort Knox. The movie was heralded as the film in the franchise where James Bond really comes into focus. Its release led to a number of promotional licensed tie-in items, including a toy Aston Martin car, which became the biggest selling toy of 1964. I remember this well because I had one. Many of the elements introduced in this movie appear in many of the later James Bond films, such as the extensive use of technology and gadgets by Bond, an extensive pre credit sequence that stood largely alone from the main storyline, multiple foreign locales, and the very iconic tongue-in-cheek humor. It's interesting to note that the car that Bond drove was probably just as popular or maybe more so than the character was. When Goldfinger debuted in New York City on December 21, 1964, Sean Connery was not at the premiere, but his car was. Because this stunt car actually did have working modifications, including the bulletproof shield, it became something of a celebrity in itself. Throughout the 1960s Bond films, in which the Aston Martin appears, the Aston Martin itself went on a global tour. The funny thing about it is that the most screen time that this car ever got in the 1960s was easily in this film. As with many of the Bond films, the plot of Goldfinger the movie differs in certain key ways from Goldfinger the novel particularly in terms of the ambitions of its villain. In both versions, Goldfinger wants to control the world's supply of gold. But in Fleming's original novel, he's much more of a hoarder than he is a shrewd dealer. Both versions required a Fort Knox heist, but the novel suggested that Goldfinger would actually steal all the gold from the United States Repository, which presented a logistical challenge for the screenwriters. Fleming never bothered his head about how long it would take to transport the gold from Fort Knox, or how many men and vehicles it would require. To get around this while still keeping Fort Knox as a set piece, the screenwriters devised a scheme in which Goldfinger would set off a dirty bomb at Fort Knox, irradiating the gold and making it virtually useless, therefore making his personal stockpile much more valuable. Like the group of actors who played Bond, the group of filmmakers who helmed Bond movies is still a rather exclusive club. In 1964, as producers prepared to make this movie, it was still a club of just one. Terrence Young, who directed both Dr. No and From Russia with Love, was assumingly also going to return for the third Bond film. Ultimately, however, he decided to step away from the grind of the budding action franchise. To replace him, producers selected Guy Hamilton, who is an original contender to make Dr. No. This would be a momentous decision that helped set the template for every future Bond movie. This movie is the first Bond film 
to have a full-on cold opening in which the character goes on an unrelated mission to set the tone. And it's also the first Bond film to play up the relationship between 007 and his gadget master Q. For the role of Miss Galore, Goldfinger's sexy and high-flying partner in crime, the director looked no further than Honor Blackman, who was then ready to leave her starring role on the hit TV spy series, The Avengers. And she already had a built-in knowledge of judo from her time on this show. For Odd Job, Goldfinger's mute, brutally strong, hat-throwing enforcer, it turned out all the director had to do was to turn on his television, where he saw the former Olympic weightlifter working on a pro wrestling show. Harold Sakata came on board, and there was Oddjob. Though the scenes of Bond driving through the Swiss Alps were actually shot in Switzerland, but the movie was made at a time when Bond films were a little bit more tightly budgeted, so the director and the production company had to make extensive use of stand-ins for various exotic locales. Early in production, a small unit was sent to Miami for the scenes in which Bond first encounters Goldfinger and Jill Masterson. But Connery and Frobe weren't there at all. Instead, stand-ins were used for their shots. The hotel sets were built at England's Pinewood Studios. And it wasn't the real Fort Knox either. The problem with the movie's climax, happening at one of the most secure locations in the world, meant that the filmmakers couldn't actually gain access to the real Fort Knox, not even through photographs of the interior. It came to production designer Ken Adam and his team to create the production's own Fort Knox at the Pinewood Studio backlot. Shirley Eaton has always described what she really went through for the gold painting scene. She says that those scenes had to be shot quickly and that during that time, she actually had the flu. They painted her entire body except for a strip down her tummy because she was laying on her stomach and you couldn't see that. It wasn't paint like you would use on a wall. It was more of a greasy sort of makeup with gold leaf in it. But it was dangerous in the sense that it feels very hot and suffocating. And that's probably what got the rumor going that during the filming of this scene, she actually died because it clogged up all her pores and her skin couldn't breathe. This was a story that was told for years after the movie came out. But she was actually fine after shooting it. It took hours to wash all the makeup off, and she decided to go to a Turkish bath to make sure all of it was out of her pores. Go back and watch this classic from the 007 series. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics 